and you say, oh, they're just okay, and just like, there's not a kindred spirit, there's not, the, but with this man, he, I think he just exudes love, and he has a teaching heart, he loves God, and he has started many ministry, a ministry in, in Zambia that's growing, he's mentoring people, he's got a wonderful thing, he taught, taught me something the other day that I will never forget. He says in Zambia, when they come together to fast for a period of time, he says all they use is spit. They don't have no water, no juice, no uh, bread, no herbal tea, you know, no Daniel fast. I mean, they just use spit. And I thought, oh, that's, I'm going to do that. I left a, a day and a half. So anyway, I tried my best. But I tell you, there's something about fasting and praying and seeking God that this changes something in here, amen? Amen. And we say, uh, maybe it's like tuning a piano. You, know, you kind of get the right, right tune. You get to hear the voice of God. And maybe all the things in the world is not as important as my relationship with God. Amen? So listen, let's give a big Madison welcome to Bishop Andrew as he comes. He just asked me what time I should stop. And you know what? In this church... We have a lot of long-winded preachers, so don't worry about that. So I'll just take that watch from you. Oh, you can see that one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Could you just turn to your neighbor and say, I am in the right place. I am in the right place. Turn again to somebody and say, hey, you are in the right place. <laughs> you are in the right place. <laughs> Praise God. You guys in the right place. <laughs> Thank you again, Pastor Bob. Tina, thank you so much. Uh, I just enjoy your big heart, you know, and uh, you just love the people and the families. Uh, it's great. And may the Lord richly bless you. Amen. Amen. I also want just to acknowledge uh, Pastor Evelyn Asani, mm -hmm. and uh, just to say it is her and her husband who has made it possible for me to be in America. Uh, their kind heart, uh, the way they are taking care of me is just amazing. Uh, I'm grateful that I'm actually almost applying for citizenship. <laughs> okay. uh, basically because of the food. <laughs> it's, it's so good and just the love that I'm being uh, offered is so beautiful. I'm grateful to God. Amen. 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 Yeah. And uh, I think I've seen two of the brethren who have come with the Pastor Evelyn from Living Springs Church. Uh, thanks again. To all of you, I just want you to know that you are not a number, but you are a human being and a child of God in the presence of God. And that alone gives me joy to be with you. Amen. 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 Uh, briefly about uh, where I come from uh, so that we can focus much more on the greatest person on earth and his name is Jesus. Is that okay? Yes. Well, I come from Zambia. Uh, the country is in central southern part of Africa, right just somewhere near the bottom of Africa. That's where I come from. The best country in the world, uh, where God lives and He visits every other country. <laughs> That's where I come from, and the Lord has been gracious uh, to my family. I'm married with five daughters only, but I've adopted two boys or two young men, meaning that uh, I am for a long time. I was a spoiled man among six women. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. You know, I was a dog, cold, and the, oh, whatever you can call it. Say, I was the best. Uh, in case you are in the process of getting married and having children, please hear me, girls are the best. Uh, they make you almost the, a little god. Boys, they compete with you, but they... <laughs> so I, I, I'm married with five daughters. Um, our true, genuine last born. When we say that in Africa, we mean truly last born because we don't have last borns in Africa until at a certain age. 
we keep on producing because we believe in large families. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Whether you have something to feed them or not, that's not an issue. <laughs> the issue is just have children. In fact, if you get married and there's no children, your in-laws begins to, or the in-laws of the wife, or of your, the, 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 your family, the man's family, begins to question the woman of what is going on. Why aren't you having children? So sooner or later, they will make sure that you know, may find somebody through whom he must have children. Because to us, children is a treasure. Yeah. Are we together? Yes. yes. Amen. 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 I've been on the pulpit for a bit, for a very short, short time. Uh, that's from sometime in 1978 uh, up to today. I'm a young man, 25 years old and holding. <laughs> My wife is only 21 years old. Um, and we love Jesus. Are we together? Yes. I reckon that today is the Mother's Day. Uh, this is a very beautiful country where the, that message has been bombarded on some of us on the TV like never before. <laughs> uh, you, you know, uh, Mama Tina, where I come from, I grew up not celebrating birthdays. So, we, I do not have a birthday, I only have a creation day. Meaning that they are not being celebrated. So we don't, we rarely celebrate birthdays, some of us, where I come from. We just uh, create a day and celebrate it. Now that doesn't mean we celebrate, but my, I have daughters. They marked their birthday in my life as early as 1st January. They begin to tell me, hey dad, my birthday is on this particular day. <laughs> they, and they, they give me problems. And I'm still buying gifts for birthday until today. Even those that are past, they still insist. No, they didn't get me my birthday gift, so get my birthday gift. So I changed it. I began to create, to celebrate my creation day, meaning God just created us. And there was no, have you ever heard of a birthday for, for Adam? No date. So that's the same with me, no date. Just, just, to, just, just, celebrate, me. just celebrate me. That's all. Yeah. Every day Every celebrate day. me. <laughs> church uh, where the Lord has graciously given to us a few people and we are a growing church. We are not a small church. I do not believe in small churches. I believe a church of two people is always a growing church. No church is small. Every church grows. Amen. So that's what I believe in. So I'm pastoring currently in Lusaka, a church uh, of about five to six hundred people. And then I, by the grace of God, not by my own power, I oversee more than 20 pastors uh, around the nation. That's how I became the small shop or the small bishop. Uh, now I'm on the middle, going towards the bigger. <laughs> All right. All right. Today I want us to look at God's word together and after that we will pray. But before I do that, with permission from Pastor Bob, may I request all mothers to stand on your feet for a moment and we just recognize you. Mothers in the house, please you just stand on your feet. Permission, I think I've got my permission from Pastor Bob. Mothers, <clears throat> I want you to know mothers that there is a, no one like you. Nobody. You may seem to be silent, especially in a continent like Africa where the fight for women's rights is still on. But I want you to know that uh, there is nobody like a mother. Yeah. Nobody will be like a mother. Yeah. You are special to God first and you are special to us as your sons and as your children. On this designated day in this country, the U.S., I want you to know that from the bottom of our hearts, as 
sons and as uh, daughters and as husbands and as men, we want to really appreciate you. And permit me for a moment to pray God's blessings upon your lives. Is that okay? Okay, let's bow down our heads to pray for these mothers. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We give to you the praise. We give to you the glory and the honor. Thank you, O oh God, for mothers. Thank you, O oh God, for the grace that you have given to mothers, even these that are here today in Jesus' name. We give you the glory, O oh God. We give to you the honor. Lord, you are a God that is so wonderful that you always believe in your people when they stand in faith before you. Today, in Jesus' name, I want to pray, O oh God, for these mothers, and I want to declare and decree and say in the name of Jesus, let them be blessed, O oh God. May they be blessed, O oh God, even, O oh God, as they are mothers, not only of a few of us, but of thousands, of ten thousands, in the ministry and also, Father, in this world. Father, may their descendants, their children, possess the gifts of those that hate them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May they see their children become what you want them to be. Amen. May they see the desire that they have had for their children come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray this, that Lord, they are blessed from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please may I ask that by the grace of God, all the men and all the children, would you stand in the honor of these mothers for a moment, please. Just for a minute or so, let's stand in honor of these mothers. God bless you mothers, God be with you, and may God make sure that your children possess the gates of their enemies. And may your children prosper. May that which came out of your womb become a blessing to you. Because God did not give you a curse, He yes. gave you a blessing. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Please take your seat. You come with me to the book of Genesis, and we are talking about something very interesting today from the Word of God. And we will peruse through the scriptures with me. And you know I'm an African, means not an African by skin, but an African by continent. Meaning that I'm coming from Africa. So in Africa, we don't look at the watch, we look at the sun. Yeah, come on. Do you understand what the difference is? We don't look at the watch, we look at the sun. So we measure how the sun is moving. So I can see that the sun is still here. So we will wait until it goes somewhere this side, then we'll know time is over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The story I want to share with you is in the book of Genesis 28. It's about a man called Jacob running away from his elder brother Esau. But I want us to look from verse 10 of the book of Genesis 28 to verse 22. I trust that you are able to read scriptures with me. And please, you got to understand that as you, I explain this, I only have a few minutes with me, with, with, uh, with me to stand up here. So it's very important that if you are able to, uh, thank God for this country. I was reading in some uh, dictionaries or so that America is the, no one can beat it in technology. So uh, some of you have gadgets that can record and do so. I have come to find out that you cannot catch the message that comes from God once. You need to repeatedly listen to it at your own time in order for you to catch it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I will share certain points, about five of them. Five of those points. And the five points could be almost like the Beatitudes. You know, if when Jesus was on the mountain, he spoke on the Beatitudes. And there were several of them. It was quite a, it's called the Sermon on the Mountain. Each one of those Beatitudes, you can actually live on it for the whole of your years. 
in, uh, uh, in life. So it's important that you know that you, I'm just picking on these points, but you must grow them at your own time because you must live them. Yeah. I want to talk today basically on church. Say after me, church. church. Say it again, church. church. You understand what I'm we're talking about church? Your attitude toward church is very important in the coming for church service. It's very, very important. Because sometimes you can come to church here and still go back the same way you came. That is not God's intention. God did not intend that when you come to church, you go back the same way you came. That's not God's intention. No. We don't come to church for a program. We come to church to meet a person and his name is Jesus. So many times when people come to church, they come to church basically to meet a person. That is not God's idea. God's idea, when we come to church, we come to meet a person. So my focus is on that. And I deliberately picked an Old Testament scripture so that you could see the shadow of the church. Amen. Are we together? Yes. Amen. The shadow of the church. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 When you understand what the church is, and particularly when you come to a meeting like this for a service, you must understand why you are here. Amen. You didn't come here to come and meet Andrew. That is me. You came here to meet a person, and his name is Jesus. Primarily, that's the reason why you came. Number two, you came to meet a person like me. So I basically secondary, and your brother and your sister sitting close to you, they are just secondary. The primary person you come to meet here is Jesus. Amen. So have that in your mind, and when you develop that attitude, you will come with friends, you will come with neighbors to church, because you will know they are going to meet Jesus, Amen. the greatest person, the most loving person. <clears throat> Some time back, we had our vice president in our country, our former vice president died. And I remember a Catholic cardinal. You know cardinals, eh? That's after the archbishop comes a cardinal. A Catholic cardinal was conducting the service and he made a statement that he amazed me. And he said this statement, he says, you know, love is more powerful than death. Amen. I said, what? You know, it came from a Catholic, not a Pentecost, but Catholic. Love is more powerful than death. Amen. I said, wow. I took that statement and searched a little bit in God's way and got a tithe from it. The point is very simple and very basic. Jesus is the lover. Believe me, you, there is nobody, very few people have ever refused love. So when you understand church, it will make a difference for you. All right. Genesis 28, beginning from verse 10. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. Remember, he's running away from his brother. You remember that? Yes. So he came to a certain place. Please say after me, certain place. Certain place. Would you say after me, certain place? Certain place. All right. He came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set, and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his herd, and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. Please notice it was set up on the earth, not in heaven. And it reached heaven, and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Do you realize what the stem is saying? They were ascending and what? Descending. Who? Oh, the angels of God. They were not, please notice that, they were not coming from the top, they were coming from the earth. While we have angels every time in heaven, the truth is that they are here right now. Amen. Amen. The angels function from the earth. They have a message that must come from here, going to heaven. We are the ones that have made them redundant, meaning that we have no use of them. Because we do not know that they are there. And the Bible says, going on, 
And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I was like the word stood. This is one of the things that I've noticed that it's only in the book of Acts where you find again Jesus is standing. In Acts, when Stephen is about to die, he says, I see the Lord standing. He again says, and he stood. Something very significant there. Above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south. In you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. And Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, I pray that many of us will awake from our sleep while we are here. Amen. Meaning that we will wake up from our slumber of Christianity today. Yes, and the Bible says, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. That's very dangerous. Then the Bible says, and he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. Have you noticed that word? It's none other than what? The, the house, house of God. God. Oh, okay. I was wondering why people are looking up. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, this is none other than, but I'm reading from the New, from the new King James. I can see that's the NIV. It says, this is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that place had been losing previously. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way, that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, so that I come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. The best to smile about. I will give a tenth to you. Let's look at this scripture in the few minutes that are valuable and then minister to one another. So, tell your neighbor, I'm glad that he's here today. Jesus is here today. What this man does not remember, his name is Jacob, is that the place he is sleeping is a place where his grandfather Abraham, when she, he arrived there, sacrificed to the Lord and prayed and built an altar, he doesn't remember that. But if you read the scriptures before, in the other scripture, you'll find that it, this is a place where this particular man called Abraham came through and he laid the altar there and he prayed to the Lord and the Lord heard him. Which means that when he arrives there, he arrives there, he doesn't know, it just means it's a certain place. But he doesn't know that this place was already a house of God before him came this particular day. Are you okay now? Yeah. You understand where we're coming from? So he comes through. Sorry, is it okay if we walk up and down some of us? Because some of us are not just on one place. So you will forgive us. We, we walk up and down. We can walk from here to Appleton. While preaching, <laughs> so, so then he comes and he spends his night there. Now, please take note of these things. Number one, church in verse ten and eleven. Church is a place where your physical needs are met. Did you hear what I said? Church is a place where your physical needs are met. I mean physical needs. If you look at Jesus, at every point, he met 
the physical needs of the people. Verse 11 in particular. It says, So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. Notice, and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. He lay down in that place to do what? To sleep. He needed sleep. He needed to rest. He had a physical need. And the Bible says when he came to church, his physical needs were met. Church is not a place where your needs cannot be met. Church is a place where the physical needs you have are met. I am not talking about church in terms of a building like we are sitting here. No, I'm talking about a church where two and three are gathered in the name of the Lord. Are you in the house, church? Yes. Just like we are gathered here. Yes. This is church. Yes. When we leave this place, it becomes a church building, not church. It is when we are here gathered together where there are two or three of us. It is important for you to know that when we gather together, it becomes now what? Church. And when we meet at that place called church, when we have a meeting like this, we have come to meet with God. And when we come to meet with God, our physical needs must be met. Amen. Amen. That's a place called church. So when you come to church, you know, I, I, I thank God, I think it was my sister there, when I had pastor praying for uh, the issue of the, his, I think it's your knee, and then others that have some stomach problems, and etc., and my brother here, I said, this is good. I do not understand sometimes, and man, that's in Africa, but here, I think I, you can understand. Uh, in Africa, I always tell people that when you are sick, that's the right time to come to church, because your physical needs must be met where? In church. Don't stay at home when you are sick. Come to church. Amen. Because your needs are met where? In church. I also tell them, I said, when you don't have money, come to church. Because when you come to church, your needs, your physical needs must and should be met. Amen. Come on, men. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's what church is. Church is not just a place where we come through and after we worship the Lord and then we walk out. No, 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 no. When we have worshipped the Lord, when we have heard the word of God, then he comes down to meet our needs. So the Bible says when he came, he arrived at this place called church. He was met by God. And God met his need. He needed to rest. I do not know what your need is this morning. No. But somehow, you most likely have a need. But if you came to church with the right attitude, and that is faith, your need shall be met. Amen. You know, before the church in the New Testament was actually born, Jesus was the church. He was everything. He was the church. Wherever Jesus was, the physical needs of the people were met. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. When they needed healing, he healed them. When they needed to eat, he fed them. Yeah. When they needed clothes, after being delivered from demons, he dressed them. Amen. Yeah. As Jesus, in case we thought he was a poor guy, no, he had some clothes. To even give to a guy when he's delivered from demons. He wasn't. I mean, sometimes we have this thing that Jesus was such a poor guy that he walked everywhere begging for No, 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 no. When he cast out that demon and delivered that guy, he made sure that gentleman was dressed. There's no poor guy who has a treasure. Just say amen if you can. Amen. amen. Have you ever had a guy who is poor but has a treasure? That's very dangerous. What will he keep? That guy, that man called Jesus, believe me, you mama, he had 12 guys to take care of. And the 12 guys, among them, most of them, traditionally we are told, about 10 of them had families. 
We see it from Peter. Matthew had a home. He left his job. Who do you think was taking care of him? Jesus. That's church. Amen. Come on, man. That's Amen. what is church. Amen. You, you people, you, you don't understand church. For people like us who have seen what God has, not being a pastor, no, just being in the church, things God has blessed us all because of church. You don't understand church, people. When you have the right attitude is all, church is good. Amen. I told one lady who wanted to get married, I said, hey, just come to church with the right desire. I told her, said, no, Jesus says, watch and pray. <laughs> so, as you are looking for a praying God, trusting God for a husband, you must, you know, it was a man, he said, we must watch and pray. Close one eye, one eye open. Close so that you can be checking which one. <laughs> Rise up from a particular point where you are in terms of attitude when you talk about church and get to a place where you realize that when I go to church, whatever need I have will be. Amen. Because Jesus is there. Amen. 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 So church is a place where your physical needs must be met. Many times I tell people in the church, I say, guys, don't permit yourself to go home the same way you came. If you came in not feeling very well, you must tell Jesus, hey, when they came to you, the Bible says, they touched you and they were all well. I came to church. And the body of Christ is more powerful than one individual. Yes. yes. That means needs must be met. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Church is a powerful place. Church needs are met. Amen. Whether it be physical or spiritual needs, they must be met. Amen. Amen. Whoever understands, say praise the Lord. Praise praise the Lord. Lord. Church is a place where needs are met. So he spent a night there when he was tired. He needed where to satisfy or to rest. He found it at church. Wow. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm not talking here about taking care of those uh, that are homeless. That is wonderful. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when we come to meet together. Whether it is on Sunday morning or as I've seen on the bulletin there or it's on Wednesday or Tuesday whatever day that you meet at the fellowship more as long as there are more than two people more, more than one person yes. at that place it becomes church. Amen. That means Jesus physically comes through to sit in there waiting for you to touch him. Amen. So the Bible says that all that had faith touched him and they were healed. Amen. That their needs met. Amen. Amen. Are we together? Yes. Number two. Notice on that scripture. Number two is a long part past the scripture. It begins. Um, number two is verse 12, then the number three is a long passage of scripture. It says, and then he dreamed, or he dreamt. Have you noticed that way? Number verse 12, and he dreamed. I like that way. Before you can add, but I just want you to look at the word dream. Please, could you say after me, dream? Dream. I noticed that you're a bit conservative, but hey, since I'm, I'm here today, okay. could you say dream? Dream. Thank you. Now, you are not even with that because Pastor Bob is wow in the Lord. <laughs> what is that? You, you seem to be cool. He is not cool. He's wow. I was telling one brother yesterday, I mean, the other day I was speaking at the African Fellowship uh, meeting and I said to him, I said, my brother, you should come to Africa, particularly Zambia, because. Uh, we have real wild animals, not in the zoo. <laughs> in the zoo, you can go and touch it nice and so. I said, but when you come to Africa, you try to touch it. It will not touch you. <laughs> it will eat you. <laughs> so he laughed. Praise the Lord, amen. amen. Number two, church is a place 
where purpose is revealed. Church is a place where purpose is revealed. You see, your purpose is not in your career. It is in God who created you. Amen. 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 Your purpose is not in your career. Your purpose is in God who created you. Yes. Do you understand what we're talking about? Your career, one day you will retire. Mm -hmm. And you will sit at home and be paid a check. What do you call that check? Retirement check. Retirement. <laughs> And uh, I mean, this, this place is so blessed. I mean, I hear of insurance and open it and switch on the TV. There's insurance. Another day, there's insurance. Another insurance. Another insurance. Another insurance. Uh, where I come from, rare do I see those insurance things. I only see one thing. You know, uh, drums beat and all this. There's no insurance. And I'm like that. No insurance. So you guys have insurance every time. When you retire, there's maybe insurance every time. There's this I mean, this is wonderful. Hey, that means your career is done. Do you understand me? Now you have to go and sleep, eat, sleep, eat. That's all. <laughs> and how old are you at that time? Most likely about 60 or 70. Abraham went beyond that, but was still functioning. Did you notice that Abraham had more children after? The age of Adam. Yes. <laughs> Did you notice that? That means the guy was still potentially nice. Yes. Come on, man. Yes. You and I retire at 55. When you come to church, you come to receive it and receive the revelation of the purposes of God for your life. Amen. It's not a place where you just come and sit down. No. It's beyond having your physical needs met. When you come to church, it's not just receiving healing. It's to come and receive the will of God. What is God saying now? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You okay to take off my church? It's time where you begin to understand. You begin to clearly understand that my needs are met. Yes, but number two to that is that don't remain at a stage or at a ladder where needs are met, where your physical needs are met. Go beyond that. Get to a place where you understand that the purposes of God must be revealed to me. Amen. That church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have a reason why I live. I don't live to eat. I live to do the will of God. So Jesus says it to them, says, I have bread that you do not know. He says, my food is to do the will of my Father. It's a sad thing many times that most of our young people, they grow and reach even up to 30 years of age. They have no knowledge why they were created. Why they were born. So they'll pursue everything that is temporal, but they never pursue the will of God for their lives. There's a reason why you were created. Amen. Come with me to Psalm 139. Put your finger where we are there. Tell your neighbor, I'm happy that he's still on the, blow, on the pulpit. Yeah. Hallelujah. I believe you'll be there with me. Please take note of this. Then I'll go to the book of Hebrews. Verse 13, he says, the word of God says in verse 13 of Psalm 139, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. That's why I thank God for those mothers, men. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Look at verse 15. My frame was not hidden from you. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed in your book. Take note of that. In your book. Have you noticed that way? Yet being and in that book, my members were written, which is continuous or were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. I like it says in your book. This is a new kingdom. In your book, 
They were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there was none of them. Yeah. Do you understand that? Before there was no days, my days were fashioned. There is a reason why you live on earth. Every day you will be accountable for that day according to the word of God. You will be accountable. Did you accomplish the will of God or did you just play around? Church is a place where the will of God is revealed. Come with the book of Hebrews. Run with me, please. Hebrews in chapter. Let me find it quickly. Hebrews. Hebrews is in the New Testament. In chapter 10 of Hebrews, from verse 5 to verse 7. I read a lot of some many times the scriptures, so I need you to follow me with your word, with the word of God. Is that okay? Yes. Some of yes. up there. Hebrews in chapter 10, beginning from verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Please look at me for a moment. I know you're looking at me, but look at me for a moment. That physical body which you have today was prepared by God for you. So which means that it is not the color of the skin, it is not the style of the hair. Look at Pastor Bob and I, we have graciously losing hair. <laughs> Are you with me? You understand that the, my statue, the way I look like, the style of my head, my style of my body was made specifically to fulfill a particular purpose in a particular environment at a particular time. I'm not a mistake. That's right. No, I'm not a mistake. The way I have made, whether I am black or white, whether I am uh, yellow or blue, it doesn't matter where I am. Even where I was born from, it was specifically designed in that manner because of a particular will of God I must fulfill. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. So I am not imbalanced. I'm not, I, 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 I'm not, you know, uh, I don't feel bad about whatever it is people think about. Because I know what God has said in my life. Amen. Do you know what God has spoken to you? Yes. Church is a place where the will of God must be accomplished. Yes. I told one brother, I said that I don't pray those prayers you guys I was telling them, not you. I said, you guys pray all the time. Father, I pray that Jesus come soon. And no, 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 no. I don't pray for Jesus to come now. Because if he comes now before I finish what God called me to do, it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> he must not come now. He must only come when I am done. And for your information, when my will or when what God has called me to do is done, I will die if he doesn't come now. I will not pray the Hezekiah prayer uh -uh. for the increase of 10 years. Please take note that when he prayed for the increase of years, it was in the 10 years that Hezekiah gave birth to the West child who became a king and became the West king and he made the king of Israel go to exile. It was in the extra years. So be watchful the extra years you pray. Let's read over to now. A body that prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices of sin, you have no pleasure. Look at verse 7. Then I say, Behold, I have come. I've got that word. I have what? Come. He's talking about Jesus primarily, but also about us. I have come as Andrew. I have come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your work. Well, there is something somewhere where it is written about you to do the will of God. You did not just come. You are not a... a, a and some of the people, they were born by accident. They got a job by accident, a career by accident. They leave everything by accident. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> leave a life knowing that you are a product of the will of God. There is something why you were born. Yes. Yeah. So Jacob realizes that it is in church where the will of God is revealed. 
Amen. Yeah. Come on, amen. Yeah. amen. That's why I love to be in church. Because every day the will of God shall be revealed to me. I will know why God called me. I will know at a certain moment why God has called me. It is in church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to number three. Is it number three? Yes. Church. Say after me, church. church. So number one is a place where your needs are met. Number two is a place where dreams or the purposes of God are revealed for you. Never miss church anyhow. Right. No. Don't, don't have a habit of that. Yes, you can go for work here and there, but don't take a habit. The Bible says uh, Jesus had a habit of attending church. Did you read that? It's in the book of Luke. It says, as it was his habit. He attended, he didn't have a Sunday, he had a Sabbath. And he attended church. You know, you, you guys have not seen, maybe you've seen it in the, in, in the, I don't know if you have that in, uh, TV channel here. Uh, it's called Discovery, not Discovery, Animal World. Yeah. Animal yes. World. You know, in Africa we know very well that if you want, if a lion wants to catch the animal or a, a, a prey, mm -hmm. what they do is they don't catch it when it's in the goal. They separate it. Mm -hmm. You see, when the devil wants to get a hold of you, he doesn't catch you when you're in fellowship. He separates you. Yeah. When you are on your own, then he begins to chase and he will strike. So develop a habit to be in the fellowship, not just in the building, in the fellowship Amen. of believers. Amen. I said number three, yeah? yeah? Number three, church is a place of revelation of God and his way. You will see it from verse 13 of Genesis 28 to verse 17. It's a place where God is revealed. Church is a place where God is revealed. Where you begin to know more about God. Jesus says, I came to reveal my Father. That's the thing I like about church. It's a place where God is revealed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You know, when we come to church, permit it and make sure that you know that Jesus Christ is revealed in your life. Church is a place where Jesus is revealed. Amen. Paul says, I am coming to you so that I may share with you the mysteries of the gospel. That is revealing Jesus. You can't know God once. And please, for your information, don't become a member of a television church. There's nothing like that. Especially you Americans. Said you never. Now it's becoming cruel. You know what means cruel? Crude, rather, not cruel, crude. Because you Americans have manufactured the church in a funny way. Church is a place where you can meet with someone. It's a place of responsibility and accountability. How do you become accountable and responsible to a TV? Come on. <clears throat> you have to come to a place where you realize that you must be accountable, you must be responsible and accountable. There is no responsibility without accountability. True. Just a word. Yes. It never, never. We are raising a generation that will be not good for us in the future. <coughs> because we are raising a generation of people that wants to eat but not accountable. Mm. They want to be eating but not responsible. It doesn't happen here, it happens in Africa. <laughs> I told you, I'm a father of five daughters. Those that stay with them, the three of them or so, they are grown up, they're in their twenties and they are working somewhere. So I don't have a problem with that. Okay? But they that stay with me, no, no, no. They must be responsible and they must be accountable. Did you hear what I said? They must know how to prepare their bed. It's too quiet, but just fine. <laughs> 
Oh yes, they must know. They must also know how to prepare a cup of tea, man. <laughs> Not just how to switch on the TV and change channels. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, he's not talking about us, but about those in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Church is a place of what? Revelation. And when you sit in church, so Jesus is revealed. Amen. <laughs> and the more Jesus is revealed, the stronger you become. Yes. yes. Let me show you something. Come with me. Put your finger in Genesis and, and in Matthew chapter 16. You know, we have hit the Catholics very well. Roman Catholic. I'm a Catholic myself, but not Roman Catholic. So, in chapter 16, I want to see something from that scripture. And it says, it talks about Jesus. Eh? Jesus says, who do the people say I am? Some say you are Peter. Some, some say you are prophet. You remember the story? Yeah. Then Peter, you remember the story? Yes. Okay. Look at what the Bible says in Peter about Peter. He says, "But who do you say I am?" So Simon Peter answered and said, "You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God." Have you seen that? Yes. Look at verse seventeen. Jesus answered and said to him, "Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven." Look at verse eight. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Please notice this. Huh? He says, you are Peter. Then he says, on this rock, mostly we are told he pointed to himself. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. But he moved from being a reed. Simon means a reed. He moved from being a reed which is moved by the wind to and fro to a stone, not the stone, to a stone because of revelation, solidness. You are only as solid as you have re re received the revelation of the knowledge of God's word. You cannot be stronger than what you have knowledge you have received. Are you doing it? Many years ago, it's not everybody in Africa who are poor, by the way. Are you with me? So many years ago, we, have, we had our basic needs met. The Lord was good to us. I grew up in a family where we had bread and butter. I had no problem with that. When I came into pastorate, because we are taught that blessed are the poor. Okay? And I came to pastorate, things were not very good. Until one day, I was praying and I was asking the Lord for something. Because my trousers were finished. You call them pants here. They were almost finished. Okay? Because back at home we say pants is the inside things. Okay? So, and the, so we're almost finished. We didn't wear nice shoes. And one day I began to pray and meditate on God's word. And the day I received a revelation that it is not the will of God for me to be poor, but for me to have all my needs made so that I can contribute to the kingdom of God. The day I did that, that's the day, that was 1988, that's the day I was redeemed and delivered from poverty. Amen. You see, you cannot be stronger than the revelation you have received. You can't. So, Church is a place of revelation. So if you, if you want to take note, Pastor Bob, I think you've already seen this. If you want to take note, the stronger Christians are the ones that are constantly in service, in church. The ones that miss often are not as stronger because they are not walking by revelation. Are you with me? Yes. You cannot be stronger. If, if I cast out a demon from somebody else, I always tell them, stay in the word of God. Stay in church. The reason is not because I want to see many people in church. Uh-uh. It's because if you are not built up to another level in life, 
in terms of the word of God, when that sickness comes, when that demon comes back and it finds you at the same level, it will get back on you and it will torture you. Yes. Right. But when you are raised at another level, it cannot do that. Yes. Amen. 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 You have to come to that position where you understand that church is a place of revelation. Without it, you cannot be a strong Christian. Yes. No. Are you receiving the word of God? Yes. So Peter received the revelation and Jesus says, you are now a stone. That is why that guy, even when everybody <coughs> ran away, even though he denied Jesus, he still stayed around. That's right. That's right. Because the guy had a revelation of who he was following. Yes. That's right. That's right. Ooh. That's right, come on. Yes. Good word. Yeah. Come on. Yes. He, had the he knew whom he was following, not by, him, by, by, by downloading some data somewhere, but by revelation. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. Are you in the house? Yeah. So he knew that I was following the Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. Everybody scampered, including the beloved John, who only appeared at the cross. Mm -hmm. But he was there. Yeah. Even when Jesus rose from the dead. The younger disciple ran faster than him, but could not enter the grave. But Peter entered because he had a revelation. He yes. knew whom yes. he was following. Whom he was following. Yes. 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 May I digress a little bit? Mm -hmm. You cannot save with the servant of God, the pastor, mm -hmm. if you don't know who he is by revelation. Amen. <coughs> That is digression. <laughs> it's not for now. When I come back again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Number four, and then we'll go to the last one. Ooh, praise God. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad he's almost there. <laughs> <laughs> number one, church is a place where we have our needs met. You remember? Yes. yes. Number two. It's a place where purpose is revealed. Number three. The place of revelation. Number four. Church is the gate of heaven. Yes. It is the gate of heaven. It is a place where blessings are commanded. That's why I want. You get the point? Got the book of Psalm. Book of Psalm. 136, 133 rather, sorry, 133, Psalm 133. Please put it on the screen, my brother. I want us to follow it very well. Psalm 133 in the King James, I believe so, or whatever version you have. Psalm 133, you know it, it's only one, three verses, eh? Yeah. <clears throat> I want you to see something, that when we are gathered together, well, yeah. come on, man. Right. When we are church, Something happens. <laughs> Ooh, praise the Lord. It says, verse 1, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Mm -hmm. All right? Let's move on. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard, rather, beard and the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. Verse 3 is what I want you to see. Verse 3. Psalm 133. What does it say? It is, the, it is like the dew of Hermon <laughs> descending upon the mountain of Zion. Look at the last part of that. For where? There! There! The Lord commanded the blessing and life forever. Amen. When you meet yeah. in church, mm. when you dwell together as brethren, not as enemies, because in church sometimes we are people that are born again and those that are born again. <laughs> <laughs> there are always again is everything that happens in church. So the Bible says when we dwell together as brethren, it, says it is for there at the place of church. At the place of unity, because there is no unity where no where there is no spirit of God. The Bible says it, we must keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, which means when we are gathered together, 
there, the Holy Spirit is there. And when he is there, there is unity. Yeah. And when there is unity in the earth, there, God commands a blessing. Church is a gate of heaven. It's a place where God pours out his blessing. Don't come to church with the wrong attitude. Come to church with an, an attitude of knowing that I am going to be blessed. Amen. Because when we gather, the Lord commands a blessing. Let's close with the last point. And it says, I'm back in Genesis. It says, I said the first thing is, what is, church is a place of what? Need, physical needs are met. And number two, purpose is revealed. Number three, revelation. Number four, the gate of heaven, where the blessings of God are. Let me give to you, I know most of you may not understand this. Please not notice that witchcraft is not only in Africa, it's everywhere. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Even in America. Yes. Only that in America is a little bit educated. <laughs> But it's everywhere. Yes. Here in the house. So one time, the Lord gave, opened the eye of this gentleman. Mm -hmm. He says, the man of God was declaring the blessing. Because mm -hmm. where God is, where the blessing of God is, 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 this man stood up and said, the Lord bless you. The Lord, he began to declare the blessings of the Lord to the people. He yeah. says, God opened his eyes. Says and when says every time the man used to say God bless you and says there was packages that angels were bringing and they would drop on each and every one like that. Wow. He says but people were not agreeing with the man of God. So what used to happen? Says says I was seeing it. The Lord opened his eyes. He says what was happening is when they drop it there, they. People would leave the place. When they left, says, I saw everybody walking out. And as they were walking out, there were so many parcels that were left with nobody picking them. Only the very few people picked them in the church. He says, because nobody of them agreed that the place they were in was a place where blessings are commanded. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> the devil did. Please hear me. Hear me very well. I can't remember the script, but I think it's somewhere in the book of Numbers or so. It says, when you have come out of the temple, oh, yeah. then it says the Levite, the pastor, yeah. or the priest must begin to bless God's people. Mm -hmm. You remember the scripture? Yes. Yeah. So when we say, what's your name, brother? Joe. If, I, if we say, Joe, God bless you, because of the office that this man of God is in, Immediately he says that because of the commandment of God behind him, because of the commission of God, something is released. Amen. Because the scripture. Yeah. Yes. Are, you in the, are you in the house? Eh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it says this man, as he said, the Lord bless you. The Lord provide you all your needs. Yes. May God shift you from another level to this other level. And he is declaring, I could see parcel in God. Remember I said to you, every time you meet in church, there is angelic visitations. Amen. They are coming from earth, going to heaven, and coming down. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he says, these angels would come and drop like on Joel a parcel, which they would be released by this man who was to get a blessing. He says, but you find, not, not you today, of course. He says, <laughs> he says, and at that particular time, you find this person does not agree. How do you agree? By the word, amen. amen. So he says, there is no agreeing. So this person just leaves and the parcels are left. Then he says, at the end of the day, I saw demonic forces come in and take all of those parcels and distribute them to their own disciples. Mm. Mm. I believe him. Church is a place, it's a gate of heaven where angels are coming from here, going up and coming down with a blessing for you. Amen. Let's close with the last one. The last one. <clears throat> You'll find it from verse 18 up to verse 22. Church is a place of commitment. Say after me, church is a place of commitment. Yes. 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 
I will dwell on this one for a little bit of time. People enjoy blessings, but very few people enjoy commitment. You will make little impact on this earth without commitment. You can't go far without commitment. You can't. You will not make it in this world without commitment. Life is not an event. Life is a process. Notice this gentleman, how he responds and connect to the visitation of God in church. In two ways. One, by his mouth. Two, with his money. Come on, man. You bring it again. You cannot connect with God without a verbal commitment. And number two, without a financial or without an attitude of tithing and giving. Ladies and gentlemen, you will not be able to see the reality of the blessings of God. It's possible to have a pour of electricity right here and yet have no power here. Because it's not connected. Why? You didn't pay for it. So it's possible to come to church everybody and you begin to see people, you begin to see that it, it seems like you are the only one that is cursed, the rest of them are blessed. Check your commitment. Amen. Check your commitment. You are either not connected because you have not paid. Let me give you a very good example. <clears throat> Do you pay for what water? Yes. In, in your houses? You pay for water. How many of you know that water, you don't pay for water. Water is a free gift of God. Do you know that? Eh? Yes, yes. You know what you pay for? You pay for the pipe that brings the water. Yeah. Not the water. Water is free. Mm -hmm. But the pipe that brings the water is not free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Let me give it to you in this way. <laughs> I like to say to people, when they say to me, no, you, you know, Pastor, okay, praise the Lord, you, you know, um, we, we men of God, you shouldn't, you know, uh, be receiving allowances and so forth. I tell them it's not true. The gospel I preach, Father, uh, Sister Tim, is free. Jesus says, "You have received freely, freely you give." But me, the Bible, I'm not free <laughs> <laughs> because he said the very next He says, "Where he says a laborer, the very just the laborer." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is wearing of his wages. Yes, that's right. <laughs> 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 you get what I said? You don't pay for the gospel, but the labor. Amen. Yeah, okay, let me, let me show you something. <coughs> Are you still in love with Jesus? Yes. 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 Are you still in love with Jesus? Yes. 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 Let me show you something. And the, uh, just put it on the screen, my brother, there. I hope that I'll find it just now, now. In 2 Corinthians, I believe so. In chapter 11. Yeah, yeah. I want to see something. When you have the pastor, and you do not support the pastor the way you are supposed to, notice what the Bible says. 11 verse 8, my brother. I did write it down. It is in the way. What does it say? Come on, read with me. What does it say? I 
was a thief to the Americans who paid me while I'm doing the work in Africa. And I rejoiced and I thought that, man, praise the Lord. You know, the, the Lord has been blessing me. I'm receiving dollars from Shata. Man. You can't tell me that I robbed other churches. When a church cannot and is not willing, you think supporting your pastor, it has to support with a big chunk of money. It is not like that. It is what you can. I'm not talking about Pastor Bob, we're not doing that. Let me just show you something. Can, are you in the Word? Yes. Is it okay if we read the Word of God in this church? Yes. <clears throat> yes. I believe that it is okay. Amen. I think it's Mark. I mean, look. Let me just get the whole of there. I want to show you to show you something that may be if not a measure, but you might remind you of something. Chapter ten of Luke. I'm reading. Okay, Jesus says them. Now look, I'm going to, uh, from this one. If you can, if you don't mind. Read on your own, on your own at one time. But look at the verse. Uh, let's begin from verse five. But whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And it says, now what? Remain in the same house. What should you do in that same house? Eating and drinking such things as they give thee. Have you noticed that? Yes. Not what they can't afford, but such things as the house is able to give. What's the next statement? For the laborer is worthy of his hire. <laughs> Are you still in love with me? Yes. yes. So when, don't pride yourself to say, man, praise God, not Pastor Bob here and his wife, no, but the others that are not here. So <coughs> don't pride yourself to say, no, no, you know, praise God, our pastor does a lot of tent making, I know he works somewhere there and he does it. Hey, don't do that. Because when you do that, you don't understand the kind of curse he's putting. Mm -hmm. I can share with you. The Bible says, and um, Hezekiah had to ask the priest, to get back to the temple because they had left the temple and they had gone out to the fields in order to support themselves. So he asked them to come back and then he told the people, you give your tithe for the priests to eat. And the Bible says when they did, then the, one of the priests declares, says, when well, there was so much food, says, and he says, why is the food like this? Because God has blessed his people abundantly. Amen. Amen. It's not how many. I can show you from the word of God. Please believe me, you. It was not the disciples that fed the 5,000. It was a boy. So it's not how many are there. One time though, I was co conducting a conference and the Lord told me, I said, Lord, look at the millionaires in my church are not giving. And God said to me, why don't you try my small people? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 The youth, the young people, lifted up the conference and paid for it with their school money, with their school money, their lunch money. Amen. They didn't go to the movies. They came and they gave to Jesus. And the conference went on. None of those youth, I can tell you up to today, so is not in employment, neither is doing business. All of them, the Lord blessed them. Because Amen. the Lord has blessed his people abundantly. Amen. God cannot borrow from you and never give you back. Amen. Hey, believe me, yo, this church is bigger than you think. Bigger than you think. It's not a numbers issue. The people are coming. Those are not an issue. People always come. Mm -hmm. The question is, are you connected?
to God's blessing mm. by your commitment verbally and your commitment financially. Why financially? Because your heart cannot be where you have not given. That's right. That's, true. That's why people move churches. Because their heart is not in the church. One young man was in our church and she used to give, used, a lady used to give a lot. And then she says to me, uh, I mean, she, we, she did some funny things. So we said, we are disciplining you and we are, if you continue this work, we are going to expel you. <laughs> I use the word expel here, but co communication. The young lady says, no, I have sinned and God forgive me. And please put me on this, but don't expel me. Because if you do, when we are building this church, we thank God here in the U.S., you get a mortgage. In Africa, churches are not permitted to get a mortgage. Okay. Because they are known as a charity, non-profit. So they can't get a mortgage from the bank. If you get a mortgage from the bank for the church, you use a personal orator. And when they fail to pay, they don't pounce on the building of the church. They pounce on your property. That's in Africa. Okay, it's a holy arrangement. <laughs> now, <clears throat> this happened where when he, this guy, now we built this building, so he, he said, you know, Bishop, I contribute to building here. I said, okay, so when we kick you out, what you will do? He says, hey, very simple. I will only ask for the block or the brick that I contribute. He said, no, I will give it to you. We'll buy one and give it to you. He says, no, 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 no. I don't want you to buy because I know it's on the foundation somewhere there. I will ask you to move it from the foundation. <laughs> the reason why we have in church people that hear the blessings of God and cannot see the blessings of God is that they are not connected financially. You cannot be in a church where you are not giving. It's not possible. When I hear about the mortgage issue which I had today, believe me, you, you can pay it. It was a boy who fed 5,000. Amen. And it was five women that supported the ministry of Jesus. Five of them. Five women. For three and a half years, all the 12 guys were paid the salary from the five women. Church, please stand with me. Hallelujah. It was a long one. I was willing. Amen. 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 Church, after the church, church. church is a place, is a place of, where of where my needs are met. Where I receive purpose, where I receive purpose. Revelation. Revelation. Revelation, blessings, blessings. and I connect, and I connect with my tithe with my and, and commitment. My this church is blessed of the Lord. It is blessed. Before we pray, I heard about what is happening. I want you to look at yourself today and begin to join this man and his wife, the pastor, in prayer and connecting also, you know, blessing wise. In Africa, we rarely get paid weekly. Here, I don't know if it's true, but I hear that you get paid most of the number of times every weekend. The number of the Some of you get paid maybe monthly, it depends. It is not proper for God's work to be swallowed up by people that don't know God at all. The bill is there. The loan must take. We can't do anything about it now. What we need to do now is come up with strategies. Please believe me, the pastor does not have all the wisdom. We have collectively a lot of wisdom. We can redeem that loan. We can do it. Jesus. I want you to take note that the people that are gathered here and hundreds more that are coming will need a shelter to 
worship God from? Mm. Will you be responsible of the work of, of the whole church closed, or will you be responsible of thousands coming in, whether you're a youth or so, mm. to worship the Lord? For one soul, one soul, the demon of Gadara, 2,000 pigs went down. Jesus permitted that to happen. You know how much it cost? I don't know here. But let's say, for example, each hawk is $60. Let's say the pig, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's $60. And there are 2,000 of them. If you multiply 2,000 by 60, how much do you get? About $120,000. Right? So Jesus was willing to sacrifice $120,000 for one soul. Amen. One soul. I will refuse to have a name written on me or a conscience to say we used to have a building, but because we did not, we failed to pay. That's why we are here. I would love to connect myself to that blessing of God, so that tomorrow when I reach heaven, they will say to me, "You did it by obeying." Me. That's my prayer. Church is a place of commitment. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to come to a place where you must simply say, I will do this every week to make sure that God's money and God's house is dealt with. But don't end there. I know you are in America where you live, not you, uh, but those that are not here, they live by credit cards. In Africa, we don't have anything like that. Particularly where I come from. If you have any credit card, they wouldn't even know where to find you next. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very grateful to the Lord for that arrangement back at home. I'm really grateful to God. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You must be able to make sure that your pastor and his wife are well supported. What does that mean? Very simple. It simply means to one simple thing. Whatever you can afford to put on the table for them. Okay. If they refuse, please just let me know. I'll come and pick it on their behalf. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pray and then I'll hand over to Pastor Bob and I'll go to have lunch now. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I want to bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus. I have obeyed you, O oh God, and have brought the word just like you say to me. To share with this congregation about church and their commitment to church. In the book of Matthew, in chapter 13, Father, you Jesus gave a parable of a man who found that the kingdom of God is like the great pair of great Christ. When he found it, he went and sold everything in order for him to buy that feast. Lord, I remember very well that you told me that this church is not small. It is a growing church, an impacting church, but it needs go to a place of commitment, verily where they commit themselves to prayer, commit themselves to the work of the Lord, the service of the Lord, but also God, that they need to commit themselves in their finances. Amen. Lord, I pray your blessing upon this church. Amen. I pray, O oh God, that from this day onwards, there will never be the same of it. Create it in Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God, I pray that the next time I come back here, let there be a complete difference Amen. of the people sitting here. Because many more are coming their way. But I pray that, oh God, it will bring such glory to you. Yes, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
May the Lord bless you. I said, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. May he change your, your feet where they are to another level. May he cause you to rise to the place where he wants you to be. May God grant you the seed of giving into your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are blessed. Amen. As you go in, you are blessed yes. as you come out. Yes. Yes. May this church be on fire Hallelujah. for the glory of God. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.